exciting, exciting film study tonight on Justin Houston. Just want to read off some stuff real quick before we start. Justin Houston has played three full games. He has a sack in each of those games. Four, snap, four sacks, excuse me, in 125 snaps. So 125 snaps is basically two full games worth. You see like 55, 60 snaps a game. So the man's played 125, already has four sacks in basically what would be two games of playing every snap. Uh, he only had 16 snaps against Cleveland, two sacks in 16 snaps, 12th season, 106 career sacks, four pro bowlers, one time all pro. Man, you know, if we could get this man a championship, I think slam dunk Hall of Famer. And we're going to see exactly, exactly what makes him so effective. I mean, he's flat out unblockable when it comes to the way he sets up his opponents. So the one thing that keeps showing up, guys, is his hand usage and his lateral movement. He is laterally really quick. So we'll see him be able to set up these tackles in this film study, a thing of beauty. Here he is, week one, Joe Flacco in the Jets. Let's go ahead and let it play. So there's the lateral movement, hand usage. This was a quarterback hit, did not count as a sack. They said Flacco's hand was going forward. But watch him threaten the edge a little bit, and you can't get hands on him. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad job by the left tackle here. Um, he is trying to get hands on him. His feet are in a good place. But the quickness, and you see how Justin Houston just stops. He's not in too much of a hurry to get to the quarterback. He leaves a little space between him and the left tackle, gets his hands off of him, and is able to close in on Joe Flacco really quickly. Uh, Garnett, professional pass rusher here, brother. Yeah, like, here's the thing I love about him is what he does, usually uh, great tackles, they let you come to them and really don't bite on the first move. But what what he does, and it's maybe, it's, I, know, I understand the Jets lines were beat up at the time, but he'll set you up with a move to make you think, like, the player, the quarterback is probably might be drifting to a, out of the pocket or around the edge of the cone, as Ken we used to call it, right? And what he'll do, he'll get you in position where he wants you to be to set up his actual move. Either he's going to, like, you know, you know, use a, a, a power rush move or some kind of, you know, technique with his hands. So it's, it's really, like, he plays chess when he, you know, when he does his, uh, his, his techniques like that, man. That's what, that's what I love about him. Yeah, a lot of people talk about, well, you have to have a rush plan. That's something you hear coming out of, of college. His rush plan is to make you get flat-footed. Like, look how flat-footed the tackle gets. Like you said, threaten the cone, threaten the edge, and then counter, or threaten the inside and go out. So let's get to our next pass rush move here. There he is at the bottom, working on the left tackle again. Again, little hezzy and go. I mean, that is really good on the lateral movement. This isn't just hand usage. This is really good. You see him widen himself out to give him space. Create a lane. That's perfect. Create a lane and perfect. Yeah, and nice job by PQ here, sticking with a speedy wide receiver out of the backfield. Nice break by PQ, if you notice, uh, protecting against the run. But again, actually unstoppable. Like, I want to I want to say, oh, well, bad job by the left tackle. But this is really just Justin Houston doing his thing. What is 76 supposed to do here with all that room? Yeah, 39 years old who? Like, I know a lot of people were a little hesitant about, you know, his age and were concerned that he may be washed when we had the signing last year. But all that he's done is impress us and fit right into this defense and make those around him great. Yeah, and it's like, what pass rush move is he using? Well, really none. He's just swiping with his hands, a little rip move there. That's when you see somebody do that, pull their arm up. That's a rip. But really, it's just intelligence, and he's got some quicks still to the inside to beat you. So it's just great. Yeah, uh, I the I a beautiful comment here. Houston is just great at hand fighting. He is. It's hard to get hands on him. Um, it's just it's just a pro, bro. He's just an absolute pro. So let's keep this beautiful footage going. Um, again, now he's going to bull you. So this is one of the sacks he's got. So he's done set this man up going inside, going outside. And now he gets him a little off balance and sees all his feet ain't set. Let me bull him right into the quarterback. Goes after the ball there. You can see with Flacco. Could have easily been a turnover. Nice job by Joe Flacco there to hold on to the ball. 
Um, but yeah, gets him off balance. So again, you're seeing him being able to set up his moves, Garnett, and adjust on the fly. Yeah, and the, the biggest thing is to me is just like he's going to win those battles when he knows he can literally get you out of your uh, your foot, out of your footing, I should say, your stance. And it's so crazy how he does that. So like, I'm watching it, and how he has to tackle, he has the tackles outside shoulder almost damn near parallel with the, the line of scrimmage. So basically, like I said, he's literally creating a lane to like, okay, I got to where I want to, and now I can hand fight you right there and just lean you over into the to the uh to the quarterback. I don't know, it's it's, it's a beautiful thing. Him, I, I him and Robert, you know, uh Robert Quinn, I don't know what the hell they've been what they're doing to their bodies to last this long, but god damn, man, I'm happy for these guys. And I tell you, it with Houston, I do right, I think you could take another step or two off his physical um abilities and he'd still be able to rush the passer because it's this little hesitation step. You see it again here, Ashley, right there, where he just decides where he could go, and he's really just deciding within a split second, should I bull this man? Should I cut to the inside? Oh, he, Okay, like this is happening so fast. It's savant stuff that you really can't teach. Um, it's either you have it or you don't. So, Ashley, let me get you on this one. You see him here with his hand in the dirt uh, and be able to set up this man like he's going to the inside you watch closely, his first move is to the inside. Gets him to lean it. Nope. And again, the hands, Ashley, and the setup. Of course, this is a pass completion, but still, this will be a highlight on our channel of just how quickly Justin Houston can beat you. Yeah, like you said, it's incredible awareness. It's incredible in intelligence. It's it's just who he is. It, like you were saying, it's nothing that you can teach. It's just the type of player he is, and we're – very fortunate to have him, especially in games such as this one. And again, his hand usage shows up here, uh, but mostly it's just intelligence. It's deking that man to think he's going inside. And Houston probably could have hit the quarterback here if it wasn't uh, a play action. Uh, you see Tua try to hit, fake the hand off a little bit. So Houston had to head inside and respect the running back. Uh, but if he heads straight towards Tua, Tua's getting put on his back here. But again, intelligence, it isn't, you know, his hands are great, but on this, he didn't even need it because that first step, I'm going to fool you into crashing, and then, bam, just around him. So pretty self-explanatory. But just great move. At, dude, this is in 125 snaps. Dude, yeah, that's just outside ridiculous. shoulder free, good everything on that play. Yeah, that's a hold where the flag at. Never mind. I'll say, I'll Thank fine. you, Garnett. I was going to say it if you weren't, sir. Uh, where's the flag at? So, yeah, threaten him to the outside, and then, bam. There's not a lot of space to work with there. Campbell is shooting the same gap, if you notice. Uh, so the left tackle it doesn't have as much room to guard, but still. I mean, that's that's a hold if you ever want to see one, Ashley. Uh, I mean, that's pretty <laughs> much the definition there. That's what I was literally just going to say. He Calais almost got his head taken off there. <laughs> Well, home, home boy said, let me see, let me, let me measure your waist real quick. Let's see like this. <laughs> yeah, he could do it. He could suit him up for a tux. He knows exactly what Justin Houston's waist measurement is after this. I love that, Garnett. That was really creative. But, yeah, he's going to threaten the inside again and then just – he waits for that man to, to get out of position, to reach for him, reaching, I'm not there, and then we'll go around him. The pass rush overall I think is pretty good. We need more out of Adafio way. We definitely do. Who's that? Um, yeah, it's been <laughs> like that. <clears throat> so you see him get chipped here. He actually is using pass rush moves, traditional ones on this one, and that's that rip move where you see him pull his arm up and rip through. So he's going to get chipped by David and Joku. He's got the first round pick, Jedrick Wills. Get off me, a rip, finish, sack, force fumble. Browns are going to recover. You can see Justin Houston, mighty happy with himself on this one as he should be um life is the number one rusher ashley you're going to get chipped you're going to have people try to stop you you're going to get held but that does not stop justin houston's product production he could have had eight to ten sacks again last year if wink would have let him would have turned him loose yeah and toward the beginning like just the first half of this game and you know before the fourth quarter, this is exactly the defense that, like, when you look at the roster and you see it and you see all these players, especially 
our key pieces like Houston coming back together. This is exactly what we need to see the rest of the season, how just consistent. Yeah, Garnett, pass rusher so, overall, man. The overall, as in the unit? Yeah, like what are you seeing here? Like we got a lot of pieces. JPP looks like he's getting his feet wet. Houston, we're yeah, showing so, today. So my, like the one thing I love about this whole thing about just the unit overall is when you even looking at this pocket, right, That play, this play that's looping right now, look where uh, Brissett can step up to. Literally, there's right there. He's literally, I can't step on this. And look at that. Boom, I can finish. So my my whole thing is I love this this pass rush from the interior out. That's how I look at it. This is why I think we're all been dying to see like just the interior push, being able to uh to win those battles when those when the opportunities come around and then be able to for them to capitalize. Shoot, Campbell got three sacks. I think uh yeah, Matabuke, he has 2.5. Uh, obviously, Travis don't open up the game against uh, the New York Giants with a sack, but hopefully there's more to come from him. But, like, a lot of these sacks that we're getting are, like, coming from the interior, which is beautiful to me. That's right. Calais is playing too much. People complain about that all the time. Calais is playing really well. Here's the next play for you guys. More of the same, bro. It's just Justin Houston being too much to handle. Uh, of course, he's going to force the double team there. Uh, the guard has to help him. Uh, Garnett, and that's going to help Calais uh, continue to penetrate into the backfield. Actually, that's Matt BK on a little twist there. Um, but, yeah, in a ways there to finish him off. Got to check it down to Njoku. Good job by the cornerbacks on this play. You can tell even from this angle because he can't release it where he wants to. And then by that time, the pass rush, Houston in his face. So, again, not a highlight that you'll see a lot of because no sack, nothing really. It's a completion, a positive play for the Browns. But Houston taking up two players on this play, Ashley, you got to when Justin Houston's in the groove, Ashley, you have got to pay attention to him. And if you're a guard, you got to expect to be able to help with him. Yeah, and and just like you were saying, how this isn't going to be on everybody's highlight reel. I just want to thank Jason for you know taking the time to make all this film for us to look at each week, and I know everybody appreciates it. I literally learn something new every week because I'm not I'm not a film. I'm a film novice, I'll say, and I don't know all the terms. I don't do it in my free time. So having somebody as knowledgeable as Jason and Garnett chiming in as well, it's really helpful to me, and I'm sure it's helpful to a lot of people out there too. Yes, Thank you, Ash. I appreciate that. I really do. But, yeah, I mean, it, I, I love it. It reminds me of, like, we used to spend Mondays after our game on, sun, after our game on the weekend um, looking at this, and there's nothing like being in the film room, Ashley, when you make a play, like imagine you being Justin Houston, you know, and the whole team, the whole defense watching this together with you and then being like, damn, man, Justin Houston. Or if you mess up, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, man, imagine you're all your teammates that you're responsible for watching you mess up on the same thing over and over again. Like it takes me back to, to high school a little bit. I just love the tape because you can rewatch, watch it over and over again. So yeah, I, I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, Justin Houston, again, just a, just a great, like I said, the amount of moves. There's another one. How quickly he gets to the quarterback. Obviously, this is a design screen run. If something doesn't go right, if something goes wrong for the Browns on this play, I mean, Jedrick Wills is a first-round pick uh, that he's going up against here, and he can't lay a hand on him. He tries. Look at that hand punch. Uh, Justin, hand, Justin Houston's hands, hand usage is just top, top tier. I mean, he's swiping, Garnett, he's swiping two hands on this play, one with each. Yeah, man. You know how, like, quick your hands can be? That's crazy. It's one thing to be quick, but, like, a second nature, like, instinctive to know where your, that person's hand's going to be at and to literally shed, shed them off that fast, man. This is pretty ridiculous to me. Right. And, yeah. Ashley, remember we, remember we were talking about, Ashley, um, when another film saw the eyes, how you're seeing through the guy? To Garnett's point, Houston's eyes looks like it never comes off the quarterback. Like he's doing, he's fending off yeah. both of this man's hands without even looking. Yeah, it's it's just like we were saying. He's so aware all the time. He's so intelligent all the time, and whenever he's not playing, it is lacking on the defense. You can tell that he is missing from there. 
So I want to take a break right here and talk about Tyus Bowser. Um, so we're doing real well. We got 13 minutes left before our guest. Um, Tyus Bowser, I think, is going to help this whole unit uh, because he can hold down the strong side. And instead of having guys like Malik Harrison and other guys that we've had on the edge, um, some guys off the street, Tyus Bowser is going to be playing that position at a high level, even if he's, you know, eased back in and only plays 30 snaps, then 40 snaps like we've seen with Ronnie. But what it's going to allow people to do is we're going to be able to use Justin Houston like he should be used. We're going to allow J to use JPP the way he's going to be, uh, should be used. Excuse me. He's going to allow a way to get off the field more. You're not going to see as much Calais Campbell on the edge. Calais can inside dominate these guards and centers. Matt Abike, same thing. So like, when Tyus Bowser comes back, even if he's not 100% Tyus, just being able to play that position the way he does, no tells, Ashley. Tyus can rush. Tyus can drop. Tyus can do whatever. Um, man, like, it's just going to think – I think it's going to help not only Justin Houston, but everybody else on this defense stay fresh and be in a role that they're going to be able to thrive in. Exactly. And that's, that's some of the nuance that, you know, we were talking about earlier is that – these players have been displaced in the defense because of Bowser's absence. So when he returns, everybody's going to be able to do what they do best, where they're supposed to be. It'll make it easier on McDonald to, you know, help them be great. And then Ojabo coming back soon as well. Th that is a position we were lacking in severely at the beginning of the season. And now we're finally seeing it come to be what it was supposed to be. When you're looking at that roster and you see how stacked it is, you're going to see all these players play the way they were meant to in the positions they were meant to. Yeah, Garnett, I was disappointed that a guy like JPP couldn't have been signed before the season. Um, you know, no offense, no, no offense to Stephen Means or Vince Beagle. Those plans went, you know, was nothing we could do. They got injured. But to have a guy like JPP sure feels good in there because – He's rounding back. He's getting better every week. Um, but I think, you know, to the original point, Bowser's going to help everybody just be able to be themselves and not be this, like, half-coverage guy like Jason was talking about uh, in the comments. Half-coverage, half-sack guy. Like, I expect Bowser to add not only to his position but to other positions. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping, man. Like, you know me, I'm a little I'm a little jittery guys about guys coming back. I, I, I want to see what it looks like, you know, feet in the grass or turf, wherever we're at. Hopefully it's grass, not turf. Uh, just, I feel like, it, it, yeah, I hope, I hope, you know, yeah, anyway. Well, uh, the, the biggest thing with him, man, like, is just the presence of him. He's probably one, I think a lot of people already discussed it, one hands down, one of the best outside, you know, covering linebackers in the NFL. You know, he's up there, you know, with the, the Kendricks, the Warners, the, you know, the Leonard's when it comes to just being able to cover the field as a, as a linebacker, a three-down backer type of deal. And I'm just that's the one thing I that's a that's gonna be beautiful once he gets back, just his instinctive knowledge and just being a great athlete and understanding what's behind him, you know. And I feel like the linebackers that we got now are they they're, they're progressing, but I think Bowser is next level in that category. And like you said, it gives freedom to a lot of other uh, uh, other personnel that we have on the team to be more flexible, and put them in a, be able to put them in the best position. And also, you know, uh, with that being said, you know, I don't know, we don't know the timetable for Ojabo, but like the Calvary is slowly arriving on this defense. And man, holy crap, man, you're, like I said, this defense is like in a, like up there already statistically in a lot of things. So it can only get better. Yeah, we'll look at the stats coming up when we face this, when we go to the Bucks preview. But the arrow is pointing up on defense, definitely, in all kinds of categories. That Miami game, man, it just ruined our stats, man. It's like, it was like we started 0 for 20, but that batting average is slowly climbing up after some solid uh, performances. So let's look at his run, de uh, let's look at his run defense here. Uh, laid back Al commenting, um, AKA the All 22, NFL Plus, Al. You go to NFL Plus, uh, you have to pay for it from the NFL. It takes about 24 to 48 hours to come out, but that's where you can see the footage that we're seeing here today. So plug in to NFL Plus. Um, brain over brawn. I'll get to the questions in just a little bit, but let's go ahead and finish out. I got two reps of run defense here. Um, leverage, eyes in the defense. So it's, again, the same thing. His eyes, Ashley, 
what I love about him, he's not looking at what he's doing. He's looking at what's going on around him. My number one quality when I'm scouting defenders is where their eyes are and how they can see it. And, you know, you need leverage, uh, which Justin Houston is not a problem, veteran. So you see him crash right there, a little bit of physicality. But he's able to stay on his feet, Garnett, anticipate the contact, kind of minimize the contact a little bit, and finish in on the bar, ball, get a piece of the ball carrier here. Yeah, man, he got he – got, it's crazy. You know, we always tell – you know, well, I say not we, but coaches always used to tell you, get low, like, but also be able to have that uh, – that the strength, you know, have a good base and get low as you can because the lowest man went right with leverage, obviously. And what in the video, just literally, if I was a coach and, like, and I'm trying to teach somebody stuff, he's literally – been out a, a, a teaching clinic right now, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, to uh, to Houston, and it's somewhat unfair to be honest with you because now I'm telling you, hey, I want you to be this damn good, which is really like, man, Houston is Houston, man. So, but he's teaching you the literally the fundamentals of what you should do. You might not do it Houston good, but you'll do it good, hopefully. Yeah, right. Something like this sticks out where he's minimizing the car crash, which is the pull and keeping his eyes on Michael Carter somehow. Um, just a great job. So the next one is more conventional. This is what you see, a run to his side, sealing the edge. Again, the eyes, look how quickly. I want to go in fast, regular motion for this. Um, how quickly he's able to see where the running back is and get in on the play. Another nice job by Mr. Calais Campbell, by the way. He always shows up on these film studies doing the right thing and being there um, as he was on the play before this. But, Ashley, look how quick he's able to diagnose where Brees Hall is, hell of a running back, and get in, get an arm on this play. Yeah, and his his physicality on top of everything else good that we've said about him is something major that our defense has struggled with for as long as I can remember, just this younger defense. So it's great to see a guy like that just not be afraid of contact like that. Yeah. And then, you know, I really can't say too much negative about 76. I think that's Spant, by the way. I apologize for not looking at his name, but like he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. The hole is there. Um, you know, does he overset a little bit? Maybe, but I mean, he gets on Houston very quickly and Houston's still able to do something with him um, and get in on the tackle. Like I said, when you're setting the edge, your first job is to make sure that guy can't get outside of you which he does. Brees Hall, if you notice, there's no chance of him going to the sideline on this stretch zone. The hole is very clear, um, but Houston recognizes that he's able to keep discipline and then pound down on the ball carrier. Uh, again, his eyes, look at it. It's just, he, sh he, sh you know, he sheds and gets off on there. So hope you guys enjoyed the film study of Justin Houston.